Now, even the simplest video game is a complex beast in its own way, the results of thousands of creative and technical decisions which eventually result in a releasable product. Well, hopefully anyway, but the nature of games development, where titles are often teased and marketed for years before being finally released, means that there's a ton of runway for developers to make a negative impression with players for one reason or another. Let's have a chat about them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 upcoming video games that are already controversial. Number 10. Suicide Squad – Kill the Justice League A Suicide Squad video game should basically sell itself, yet Warner Brothers and Rocksteady have had a hellish time bringing Suicide Squad – Kill the Justice League to market. The game was first announced in August 2020, though the lack of substantial gameplay shown off in the years that followed left many fans skeptical, and once images of the game's UI leaked this past January, suggesting that it would be heavily reliant on live service elements, it was unfavorably compared to Square Enix's recent superhero live service flop, Marvel's Avengers. But the most worrying blow came in February, when a more extensive gameplay reveal showed the game to follow a conventional looter-shooter gameplay loop, which many felt wasn't especially fitting for the Suicide Squad. This combined with Rocksteady quietly revealing that their game would be always online even when playing solo caused a major uproar online, enough so that in April it was delayed from May to Feb of next year. While Rocksteady will presumably take this time to respond to the player feedback, it simply isn't possible to reshape a game's core experience in just nine months, so Warner Brothers may ultimately be delaying the inevitable by pushing this thing back. Number 9. The Day Before Multiplayer open-world survival game The Day Before was first announced in 2021 for an intended June 2022 release date, though that was ultimately delayed to March of this year as the game swamped from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. But then in January, The Day Before was pulled from Steam, on which it was highly wishlisted, with developer Fantastic claiming that it was related to trademark issues with the game's title before confirming another delay to November. The number of delays and lack of substantial gameplay footage have led many to speculate that The Day before was in fact a scam and didn't actually exist in any playable form. The developers quickly came out to combat these claims, and though they later released 10 minutes of gameplay footage, it was basic enough to leave many unconvinced that it was a game that had actually been in development for the last several years. Needless to say, if the day before misses its November release date, not a single damn person will be surprised. Number 8. Multiverses Free-to-play fighting game Multiverses launched in open beta last July, and the Warner Brothers-themed Smash Brothers clone quickly became a huge hit with 20 million players downloading the game by September. Yet, this past March, developers Player First Games announced that their open beta period was ending in June, and that Multiverses would be shutting down until its proper release in 2024. The news came as quite the shock to any fan who assumed that the game had simply exited the open beta period at some point. Given that Multiverses had been playable for close to a year by the time the shutdown was announced, this additionally frustrated those who had spent real-world money on microtransactions, because while Player First Games confirmed that any purchases would be retained for when Multiverses relaunched, no refunds would be offered in the interim. Given that players had paid for in-game items and won't be able to use them again until an unspecified date next year means that the anger here is totally understandable. Plus, Multiverses' multiplayer community was dwindling fast in recent months, so it wouldn't surprise many if the 2024 relaunch failed to bring back players en masse. Keeping a game running long enough that people forget it's in open beta and then randomly shutting it down for an indeterminate period whilst keeping people money is, well, definitely a Warner Brothers choice, all right. Number 7. Ark Survival Ascended when a game announcement is so head-smackingly insulting that people legitimately mistake it for an April Fool's prank, you know you're in trouble. A sequel to Ark Survival Evolved was first announced in late 2020, though last month it was confirmed that Ark 2 was delayed to late 2024. Now, There's nothing inherently wrong with that, of course, except that the developer Studio Wildcard also announced that it would be releasing a remaster of the original Ark entitled Ark Survival Ascended to tide fans over until Ark 2's release. Again, there's nothing outwardly bad about that, or at least there wasn't until Studio Wildcard confirmed that the remaster and all of its DLC would cost a stonking $90 as part of an exclusive bundle with Ark 2. Considering that players are used to next-gen upgrades being free or charged for a small fee, it seemed rather excessive. And worse still, the company announced that the original Ark servers would be turned off in August, ensuring that owners of the original release could only keep playing if they ponied up for the remaster. Studio Wildcard caught a ton of flack for this from their understandably pissed 
pissed off player base, only for them to walk back their original plan and sell the remaster on its own for only $60, which wasn't a whole lot better. But most importantly, Wildcard's plan to shut down the original Ark servers in a matter of months hasn't changed at all, and announcing it on April the 1st of all of the dates in the world just felt like rubbing salt in the wound. Number 6. Six Days in Fallujah now, this list is about upcoming games that are already controversial, but honestly, was there ever a time where Six Days in Fallujah wasn't controversial? This tactical first-person shooter was first announced in 2009 and was sold as taking place during the Second Battle of Fallujah, an Iraq war conflict which occurred in November 2004 and caused the deaths of roughly 800 Iraqi civilians. Even back in the blinkered days of 2009, many questioned how appropriate and tasteful Atomic Games' shooter was, and that it was turning a recent atrocity into big budget entertainment. Amid the controversy, Konami quit their role as publisher in mid-2009, and though initially dated for a 2010 release, word went quiet on Six Days as Atomic Games began to hemorrhage employees. In early 2021, however, Six Days in Fallujah was brought back from the dead and confirmed to be close to completion under a new studio, Highwire Games, comprised of former Halo and Destiny developers. The new version of the game was revamped to be more sympathetic, with the Marine campaign centered around avoiding collateral damage, while a second campaign focus on an Iraqi civilian trying to protect his family. All the same, few had sympathetic ears for the game's revival, with some even demanding that Sony, Microsoft, and Valve deny it a release on their storefronts. The project's last major update came in September, when it was delayed to an unspecified 2023 date. With such a wave of negative PR going against it, would it shock anyone if Six Days in Fallujah was just quietly cancelled? Number 5. Abandoned Survival horror game Abandoned was first announced in April 2021, with a frankly astonishing photoreal teaser trailer which also touted a Q4 2021 release date. The trailer's style and tone immediately drew comparisons to both Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid, and convinced large quarters of the internet that it was in fact a secret project from Hideo Kojima. Though Kojima's involvement was disputed by developer Blue Box Game Studios, eventually Kojima himself had to pipe up, declaring that he had no involvement with Abandoned and, per his frustration, frustration at being repeatedly linked to it, hoped that the team would just hurry up and release it. Evidently, the planned release window was missed, while a companion app launched that summer amounted to nothing more than a 5 second gameplay render, and a planned trailer drop at Gamescom never materialized. The studio nevertheless announced that a playable prologue would be released before the main game, only to then delay it to March 2022 before Hassan Karaman revealed that Abandon's concept had changed mid-development. Leaks have since suggested that the game had been reworked into more of a political thriller, and last June, at GameSpot published a damning report citing a toxic development culture that the lead director was intentionally misleading players and suggested that the game had made little progress. And as gorgeous as that first trailer was, don't expect it to ever actually transpire into anything playable. Number 4. Prince of Persia The Sands of Time Remake a remake of the legendary Prince of Persia The Sands of Time was first announced in 2020, with a planned release date of 2021, but immediately suffered a catastrophic backlash due to the revealed trailer's rather underwhelming visuals. Basically, it felt like Ubisoft was trying to cash in on the current popularity of remakes by curling out a low-effort update of one of their most beloved legacy titles. Ubisoft initially claimed that the visual style was an intentional choice to make the game stand out, but fans were not having any of it. As a result, the publisher ultimately delayed the game to March 2021 before later delaying it indefinitely to an unspecified date in an attempt to deliver a faithful remake. Official word has been incredibly quiet for the last two years, but by May 2022, Ubisoft Pune and Ubisoft Mumbai had been taken off the project and replaced with Ubisoft Montreal, and rumors indicate that Montreal may have restarted development completely from scratch. Even with the more reliable Ubisoft studio now working on it, it's safe to say that expectations are incredibly low for what should have been a slam-dunk remake, an easy way to celebrate a classic title and renew interest in a dormant franchise. Number 3. Final Fantasy XVI Final Fantasy XVI certainly looks like it's going to be a terrific entry into the franchise, but it's also a game that's received significant flack for its exclusive character demographics. Many have repeatedly called out the game for featuring scarcely any non-white characters in the central land. The game's producer, Naoki Yoshida, only dug a hole for himself further when he suggested in an interview with IGN last year that the lack of racial diversity marked an attempt to represent a realistic depiction of a setting inspired by medieval Europe. This didn't exactly do Yoshida or the game any 
any favours, given that the Final Fantasy series has never been about realism, and the game's abundance of fantastical creatures are certainly less realistic than a black man existing in a medieval European locale. More to the point, and I hate to break it to Yoshida, people of different races did exist in medieval Europe. Simply, it's tough to imagine any fans of the series having their immersion broken by the presence of non-white people, and so it's tough not to roll one's eyes at such a transparent non-answer from those in charge of this game. Final Fantasy XVI will no doubt sell like gangbusters regardless, but is a little ethnic diversity really asking for much? Number 2. Unrecorded Last month, the aptly titled development Drama released their first gameplay footage from their new first-person shooter Unrecorded, where players take control of a tactical police officer from the perspective of their body camera. The visuals proved jaw-droppingly realistic, enough so that many immediately questioned their authenticity, and amid accusations that the gameplay was actually pre-rendered, the main developer actually posted a clip of the game in Unreal Engine to prove that it was indeed legit. But beyond that, others were left feeling rather uneasy by the game's subject matter, given the ongoing problem with police brutality and shootings in the US in particular. This, combined with the ultra-photorealistic visuals, prompted some to condemn Unrecorded as a step too far, especially with the game's politics currently remaining firmly under wraps. And number 1. Star Wars Eclipse at the Game Awards in 2021, it was announced that Quantic Dream, developers of Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human, were working on an interactive drama set within the High Republic era of the Star Wars universe titled Star Wars Eclipse. Beyond that gorgeous cinematic reveal trailer, official word on the game has been basically non-existent, though plenty of troubling reports have abounded in the interim. Mere weeks after the game's reveal, it was reported by prominent insider Tom Henderson that Eclipse's development had stalled due to issues with the game's engine, and also that it may not release until 2026 or 2027. Worse still, Henderson added late last year that the studio's Paris HQ was struggling to hire staff, believing it to be the result of numerous toxic workplace allegations levelled against them in recent years. While Quantic Dream's track record for producing polished, high-quality games definitely speaks for itself, Star Wars Eclipse looks to be their most ambitious, high-pressure title to date, and with development occurring at a time of intense, well-deserved scrutiny for the studio, it could be their true sink or swim moment. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 upcoming video games that are already controversial. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.